My name is Lenore Mallerney. I'm originally from from all over the the Western United States, but the last 40 plus years was Reno, Nevada is home. I always tell people that the f first thing I, that let me know that I was at home in Panama is it's the first place I've ever moved to away from Nevada that I didn't get so homesick I could smell sagebrush in my sleep. In 2017, uh, my husband was retiring and came on a Panama relocation tour. We were um, leaving, you know, this was our our big dream um, for the free, five years previous. We had come and visited a couple of times. We got our ducks in a row and moved uh, originally to one of Jackie's casitas um, in Volcancito while we searched for our beach home in Panama. We knew we were beach people and I knew I needed the Pacific coast because it was a few degrees cooler and a little less humid than the Caribbean side. And um, after a couple of months, we landed in Boca Chica. We're there for mm, four, four and a half years. And now I'm living in Playa Blanca. Very different, very different environments. Um, Boca Chica is like living in a wild, wild kingdom. Um, and beautiful and natural. And there's really, I think is uh, Cherokee is the most beautiful part of Panama, but, um, moving on to a new chapter in my life. And I had to look at what's practical for a single woman. You need to be near amenities. I have a grocery store five minutes down the road instead of an hour down the road amenities like a generator that kicks in five seconds after the power goes out instead of how long is the power going to be out and do I start up my own generator and so um, practicalities amenities being nearby medical care I'm closer to the city now I, uh, I even got brave enough to drive in Panama City now uh, because uh, one one perilous ride on one of those white coaster buses between Panama City and the beaches, and you'll get over your fear of driving in Panama City, I guarantee. <laughs> it's been quite a ride. I have acquaintances all over Panama now. Um, I've been in Playa Blanca's um, about nine months now, and it surprised me to go to an event that was Pretty much all of the beach communities were going to this um, music thing. And when I got there, there was probably 60 plus people there. And I at least knew the names of half of them in just nine months time. Um, it's quite different in that it's much more populated where I live now. The Rio Ato airport is about five minutes from Playa Blanca and it has direct flights now from Montreal and Toronto. Very convenient for the Canadians to come and go. Yes, I just really love the area. It's a um, gated community. You don't have any unexpected visitors here. Like you have to send them an invitation and now you get a QR code that you have to flash at the gate to, um, to even enter the complex at all. And within it, it's like a tiny town. We have restaurants and bars. There's a spa, a beautiful saltwater lagoon out there. And um, I go to the section that's for owners. So it's a little more set off from all the tourists. And, and two in contrast here, the beach itself is much more touristy. A lot more people down there on a daily basis, especially on weekends and holidays. There, there are several little, I mean, different complexes. There's Founders, there's Villa Azul, and and terrazas and balcones, and some of them I haven't even located yet. Walking around, I, I go, where where do you live again? We have our own pool, a couple of um, picnic areas. Again, on the weekends, we can fill up with weekenders and, and uh, it can get a little bit of a party atmosphere, but 
it's pretty quiet here. I have a nice um, little peekaboo view of the ocean from my balcony. The evenings are really lovely out there and you catch that sea breeze and I'm just about mm, probably a five minute walk to the beach from here and it's pretty extensive. People walk early in the mornings, they'll start in this area and they have a circuit that takes them down to down the beach to the Buena Ventura and back and it's about five kilometers um, round trip. Here in Villa Azul, every single apartment is the same. I think um, the upper floors, you know, like a penthouse floor has more terrace space, but that's pretty much the only difference. It's a two bedroom, two bath, pretty much open space living between living room, dining and kitchen and a nice little laundry room area with a laundry sink, which some people are envious that I have that because they have to deal with filling and dumping mop water in their, in their showers. The layout is just, it's very livable. And when I have guests, it's very private because the, the bathrooms are sandwiched between the sleeping space. So everybody has their privacy and it's a nice little spot. This place came furnished for all of this. $8.50 a month, inclusive of everything but my electric. And my highest bill was um, $140. I made some adjustments, figured out how I can, you know, economize on it a little bit more, and have got it down as low as, as $100. We're really conveniently located here, about maybe two kilometers back to the highway is a shopping center that has a Super 99 grocery store, who, by the way, uh, provides during the, um, during the high season, twice a week, morning and afternoon, they run a shuttle now. Because a lot of these people don't come, you know, they come in on a flight, they're only here for a few months, so they don't have vehicles. And now Super 99 is providing transportation to and from. Also, there is an Arocha and a Novi. And uh, to me, well, I know I'm in civilization if there's a Toto a dollar store. One thing that I really like about the community is it's very welcoming. There is a community chat. People that aren't centralized in Playa Blanca can also join in on the chat. We communicate with each other about events that are happening. I had an issue with, with my vehicle and I was like, okay, who, who out there can tell me where the nearest, best and most reliable mechanic is? I got an answer back in like five minutes. Hey, in fact, I'm going there today. Would you like to follow me so you know where it is? I contracted pneumonia early on here and put it out on the chat and that everybody says, okay, you want to go to this place and this doctor, he speaks English. He was uh, inexpensive, very affordable. I think it was $80 for the, um, for the visit. And I got three inhalation treatments. The one drawback for me is I, I'm on the Panama insurance plan and they did not, not accept that for payment. So um, it is out of pocket but it's very good care. You can get your labs done at, at this clinic in Coronado. Um, I've seen two different specialists there, now an orthopedist and a um, dermatologist. It's kind of an all-in-one shop and really affordable. I did have to have an MRI. Anybody who's had one in the States knows what that base price is. It's not $200. And that's, uh, that's what I paid for that service here with insurance. The results are always met very efficiently. I haven't been treated by any doctor in Panama that I didn't get very uh, quick results, uh, very personable service, you know, actual caring, spending time with you, uh, as opposed to getting the numbers up and, and running you through that, through that office. Um, and also many of them have given me their 
their personal numbers, their WhatsApp numbers. So I'm not calling an office trying to make an appointment. I contact the doctor himself and we decide if I need to make an appointment and he'll, he'll tell me when he's available. When it comes to personal safety, and, and I've talked about this with many of my neighbors and friends about how um, we feel that there isn't a safer place in the world than Panama to be a single woman. I go to Panama City by myself. I walk around the Santa Costera any time of the day or night, I feel like it. And I've never been accosted or felt unsafe anywhere in Panama. Here we co-mingle all the time. Uh, since a majority of the population of, of this community has gone home for their summer, on that community chat, somebody said, hey, is there anybody still here? And why don't we uh, start getting together, the few of us that are, are here full time and do our own social thing on Tuesday. So we move from one pool at, at one complex to the next to the next every week. And um, it's a different, you know, different gathering of group. I met people that I didn't, hadn't even seen during the high season um, after everybody left. Whatever you're into, there are a lot of activities here. There, there's something for the foodies, you know, restaurants nearby, there's, you know, water sports and, and adventures. Well, they've got tennis courts and pickleball. It's the new sport for, for senior communities and also um, a new income stream for emergency rooms. I really can't think of all the things that are possible for me to do here. And, and then nearby are, are um, like uh, El Valle de Anton is, an hour's drive away, and Coronado and, and Penanome are only 30 minutes away. So if there's something that you can't find right in our little shopping area here, which is um, you know, pretty much what the average person needs, then you can go farther afield and, and find it. And also uh, discover some really beautiful areas of Panama in the process. The Panama Relocation Tour, I have seen examples of, of other tours that aren't as comprehensive. And once the tour is over, they're done with you. Uh, between the, uh, the online chats and support that you get, the, um, the tour itself, the guide that comes with it, you have ongoing support we came five years ago, and I can text Jackie today with something that's befuddling me or something that, that I'm not getting the information that I, I need on. And she is back to me with that in no time at all, or is addressing it in, in um, one of her video chats or something, because I'm not the only one that's, that's experienced something like this. If one of us is, the whole community is. When you spend the money to go on that tour, it may seem like, wow, that's, that's quite an outlay, but the money it saves you in mistakes that you can make by making the wrong choices, by following the wrong advice, and the support that, that doesn't follow that, um, you know, the service after the sale, as you say. The Panama Relocation Tour is the best money you can spend before you make that move to determine if this is even the right place for you. For people that are considering if this is a change they want to make, internet research can only take you so far. You've got to actually go and experience the places and the, and the people and find out if what um, some of these magazines will tell you is true. 95% of Panama does not speak English. You do need to know some of the language and the sooner you gain that, the better. It's, it's more helpful to you. And get boots on the ground. Check out several areas. I like to tell people that Panama's like a buffet. My absolutely perfect piece of paradise is not going to be yours. You may prefer something more civilized than 
the jungle where I was living at the time I made this statement. But there's a perfect place for everyone. It's just finding the dish that you like best on the buffet. I just can't, can't say enough how important it is to don't just pack your bags and go to any country not knowing what, what um, you're in for. The pictures can be really great and the, the article can be very intriguing, but actually going there and dealing with the governmental red tape of immigration and, and you know all the little details that goes into it is very daunting if you don't have, have some concept of what that is going to be like. Jackie encourages people to rent before, before buying. Find, try on a location, see if that works for you. I have a friend who's moved uh, four times to four different locations. She thinks she's found her sweet spot at last. For people that are not going to go on the tour itself, the guide is very, very useful. Uh, it's got information on attorneys, referrals. Anytime there's a referral made, it's to someone who has been vetted by Jackie herself, and she rests on her reputation that, um, that she's not uh, hooking you up with somebody that's going to take advantage of your ignorance, who's going to guide you through the process. Like the driver's license has um, that in itself changes from time to time. Immigration's a moving target from one week to the next. You may need this, but then you need something else in addition to. And the guide and, and Jackie's uh, support on her website also keeps you abreast of all those little changes that, okay, last week it was okay to, to do this, or you only had to present that. Here's what you now need to bring as well, because being prepared is going to save you a whole lot of um, frustration in what should be a joyful process. You have a roadmap to, you know, making life easier for you once once you're here and get in the process of actually uh, becoming a Panamanian resident. In closing, I just wanna say that I have thoroughly enjoyed my experience in Panama. Uh, I love living here. In fact, I've been here five and a half years and have gone back to the States for three visits that were more than a few days long. I absolutely love it here the people, the community, the, you know, the culture that's available to us here. You know, come on down and check it out for yourself because there's nothing that any of us can describe that will convey the experience that you're going to have and the richness of it. There's a place for everybody. If you're a mountain person, if you're a beach person, if if you like it cooler, if you like it hotter, if you like it wetter, there's a place for everybody here. And it's your turn to discover that for yourself. So we'll see you all in Panama. The adventure awaits. Mm -hmm.